about six years ago when we started the Resolved Conference, I was asked to uh, put the music together and uh, we started gathering our resources together and found at the end of the day that we were drawing from one particular source rather heavily. And that was from Sovereign Grace Music. And over the past six years, Sovereign Grace Music has played a vital part in the music ministry of Resolved and has really given us uh, a vision to continue what they're doing and to partner with them. And we are so happy to welcome Mr. Bob Coughlin here at the Resolve Conference. So we'll welcome him up. Now, how many, just out of curiosity, I know that this is probably, well, let's see, how many of oh, you sure. would, can we get some, some light? <laughs> CJ. You know him? <laughs> cool. Thank you. Um, so you are, Bob, the Director of Worship Development, is that right, at Sovereign Grace Music yeah, Ministries? No, I just want to start out by saying how disappointed I was to find out that I was the special guest. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, oh. what a... Yeah, I I'll am. do what I can, but... Sorry. Um, how many out there would be familiar with Sovereign Grace Music? <laughs> right, okay, well, I guess we're done, so... <laughs> Um, we are so excited to have you here, Bob, and just uh, from myself and from our team and from all of the Resolved Conference, uh, we want to thank you for the contribution to church music that you and Sovereign Grace Music are making. Uh, there is a shortage of great biblical, gospel-centered, fresh music these days, and Sovereign Grace Music is right at the forefront of putting that stuff out. And uh, we are so thankful for you. So let's, can we thank him? So I thought, um, I thought that as long as he was here, see, he thought he was going to get off easy. He thought he was going to come out and spend some time, kick back by the pool. And when I found out that he was going to be here, I told him we needed to put him to work a little bit. So, uh, Bob, I uh, just want to ask you a couple questions. Um, why don't you just give us uh, a little rundown on Sovereign Grace Music, what you guys are doing and what you're about? Yeah, philosophically. Yeah, uh, yeah Sovereign Grace Music uh, exists. It just kind of grew out of the songs that we were writing in our little family of churches, uh, writing out of the response to the teaching we were receiving. Um, and it's really, humanly speaking, due to this man sitting in the front row, CJ, who has inspired and led us and taught us, uh, along with many of the, the pastors in Sovereign Grace, about the centrality of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we looked around uh, to the songs that were being written and saw whole albums that were absent of that, that doctrine, that truth, that reality. And we thought, well, we're going to try and do something to fill that. Um, so that's where we, I think we began, but then we've, we've, you know, we're trying to broaden the themes, just giving the church modern songs that do what it says in Colossians 3.16. You know, it says that when we sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to one another, we're to teach and admonish one another. So we're even giving away a little sampler here that says songs that teach, because we believe songs, whether they intend to or not, teach. So we're trying to write songs about 15 or 20 songwriters in Sovereign Grace, hopefully that number's expanding, that help us learn how glorious the Word of God is, how glorious Jesus is, how glorious the person and work of Christ is, and so that we can involve not only our hearts but our minds as well in bringing praise, glory, and honor to Jesus Christ through song. Great. For those of you who haven't put this together yet, Bob is CJ's counterpart to Sovereign Grace Ministries, and you guys have been working together for how long? How many Way years? Way too long. Can't remember? But he, is, <laughs> he is a friend I do not deserve. Known CJ for 33 years. 33, 33 years. years. And we've worked together at conference and stuff for 20 years, but we have actually been in the same church and now we're in the same small group together for 13 years. That's great. 
Um, tell me a little bit about, you have a book out right now, it's called Worship Matters, great for worship leaders. If you don't have that and you're a worship leader, you need to get it, you need to read it. Uh, but you are working on a new book, and that is going to be what? That's a great question, John. Okay. Um, we're formulating that even as we're here on stage. Um, <laughs> I'm writing it this summer. The guys at Crossway, Justin Taylor in particular, uh, asked, called me and said, would you be interested in another book? I said, well, I said I'd never write another one, but okay. And he said, we, we want you to write a book more aimed at people in the congregation. Worship Matters is for leaders, really, pastors, worship leaders. Um, but we, we intended you to write this book for the people in the congregation. Originally, you didn't write that one, so we were wondering if you would write that this time. And I said, sure. So it's going to be a smaller book, but intended for people in the congregation to give them a better understanding of what, it, what we're supposed to be thinking and doing as we come in to a corporate gathering on a Sunday morning to understand how to make the best use of that time for the glory of Jesus Christ. So hopefully be out April of next year. Great. So let me ask you just, just one question along those lines as you're working on this and you're preparing this material. What is the one thing that you ha has impacted you the most as you've talked to churches and as you've kind of reviewed that material to put the book together? What is the single challenge or the, if you could single it out or maybe name a couple, the biggest challenge that you would say that we have in coming as worshipers? Uh, I think that we, our biggest challenge is what's in here. And our biggest challenge in here is idolatry. It's thinking that things other than God himself, as he's revealed himself to us in Jesus Christ, can satisfy us, give us ultimate pleasure, sustain us, ultimately save us. So we spend our weeks thinking, oh, if I get this, if I buy this thing, it'll make me happy. Or if I play this game or watch this movie or buy this outfit or buy this car or get this new iPad or, or whatever. That will make me happy. And I go to church to kind of give God His glory too. And, and I think we will only, we will benefit the most from our gatherings when we realize it really is all about seeing the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. And that there is nothing, nothing more satisfying than that. Nothing more glorious than that, and it's what we as Christians were created for. So my aim in writing the book is to help people have that mindset, which of course will make our churches stronger, more Christ-exalting, more evangelistic, more God-glorifying, and that's, that's the hope of the book. 